Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Greenberg. I'm a Product Marketing Group Director at Cadence and I wanted to talk today about selecting types of memory for your data center projects. And this is one of the one of the questions that I get asked most of all by people is what type of memory should I use for this particular project? And I, I want to go into it, some of the trade-offs and looking at you know how to make that decision. So let, let's get started. If we look at this illustrative data center rack Right? I'm showing here actually sort of four applications that might exist within, uh, within a rack or within racks within the data center. Right? And these four applications that we might see, we might see a, a top of rack switch, we might see a compute server, we might see a special purpose processor accelerator, and we may see a storage server. Right? And so all of those have got slightly different requirements and they use different types of memory. Right? The top of the rack server for the data plane, very commonly using HBM or GDDR6. For the control plane, it would be using DDR5. The compute server for the main memory, very often DDR5. For the storage, some combination of SSD or, or HDD. And it may also include uh, CXL memory uh, for, uh, for a DRAM expansion. So that can also happen. Special purpose accelerators, this one is really very open to uh, the type of special purpose accelerator that you have. We see all the major memory types used here, and the next slides will help you to make that decision there. And then finally, for storage servers, main memory, very commonly DDR5, possibly moving to CXL in the near future, and then SSDs and HDDs for the actual storage, long-term storage of the data. Now, what I want to show you here is one of the criteria that we use for making these uh, determinations. And I, I'd like to draw this chart here. This is uh, bandwidth on the y-axis and capacity on the x-axis. So you might imagine more bandwidth is, is more performance if you need all that performance. And then capacity, uh, it gets sort of more expensive in this direction, so lower cost would be in this direction. Right? And we look at the major different memory types here. GDDR6 uh, is typically a, a um, uh, a very low capacity but high bandwidth solution. And we see that especially with things like AI accelerators and things like that, uh, a very popular memory for doing that. Also used for graphics uh, processing units as well, of course. LPDDR5, most people think of it as a mobile memory, but very commonly uh, we're starting to see this also in artificial intelligence, machine learning type of applications where LPDDR5 is providing, again, the correct ratio of bandwidth to capacity. And then, like I said, for main memory, for compute servers and things like that, DDR5 provides that main memory. But they actually exist within different spaces within, within the solution space. If we look at HBM, you may find, of course, that it goes you know, way, up, way up the chart here. Uh, but the HBM can provide a huge amount of bandwidth at a relatively high cost compared to the other memories. So it exists in a slightly different solution space. And then one of the things that we can do is to add capacity by adding multiple different channels. So as we add channels of um, GDDR6 or LPDDR5 or DDR5, we start stepping up this chart in, uh, in increments here with each, different, um, with each different channel that you add. And so you can very quickly find yourself uh, being able to provide perhaps more bandwidth uh, more, more memory capacity with GDDR6, even eclipsing some of the HBM interfaces, uh, a single HBM interface. So there's a lot of different ways of doing this, and I think solving this chart for what your application need is, is one of the key things to pick the memory type. So let's, let's look at uh, you know, the summary of this, um, a very quick summary, how to pick your memory type. Right? The first thing is, is if your end market requires a particular kind of memory, Choose that memory, right? If everybody in your, if, if everybody in the market space requires a DDR5 and you need it for the reliability features that are in there, then just use DDR5. Don't fight that, right? But if you do have an open choice on here, the next thing is actually probably try to consider your budget, right? And work with your memory package and PCB vendors to understand what are those costs, especially if you're considering an HBM solution where you have to consider the cost of an interposer within that solution. Then the next thing is to know your capacity requirement, minimum and maximum. That will help to guide your decision. Um, knowing the performance, uh, both bandwidth and latency requirements, that will help to guide your decision. Right? And if you've gotten this far and you're still down to more than one memory, 
Uh, you can reject um, anything that doesn't meet performance capacity, of course. And then finally, if, you're, if you still are down between one or two memories at this last point here, then you start looking at things like energy usage, cooling, uh, PCB area as the tiebreakers between the final choices. But this is a, you know, an, an idea, a framework for determining how to choose your memory type. Uh, it's going to be very personal to each system, and you really have to do a lot of analysis to do it. But hopefully this analysis method will help you to get started and help you to choose the right memory for your server. So that's what I had to say. Thank you very much for listening today, and uh, uh, thank you to Chip Estimates folks for making this time available. Thank you.